Hello everyone, and welcome to the Today in True Crime and Portraits podcast. I'm your host, Jane Flowers. On today's episode, I will be talking about William Eggleston's photograph called The Red Room, 1970-3, his films, Stranded in Canton, In the Real World, and imagine the colorful Mr. Eggleston. As well, I'm speaking about William's close friendship he has with photographer Jurgen Teller, Stella McCartney, Paul McCartney, and director David Lynch. While I speak about his close friendship that he has with these people I just mentioned, I will be talking about William Eggleston's work in the film industry and how his photography affects people. This episode is partially true crime mixed with portrait photography, and now my story begins. On May 1st, 2019, just 10 days before the day my father, U.S. Navy veteran dentist Dr. Tom Boring, was murdered on May 10th. When I noticed Stella McCartney and David Lynch were helping William Eggleston publicize on Instagram his exhibition, William Eggleston 2 one fourth, that was held in London from April the 12th to June the 1st, 2019, at the David Zewiner Gallery at 24 Grafton Street in London. The show followed recent exhibitions of William's work in the UK, such as William Eggleston's Portraits Exhibition at the National Portrait Gallery in London in 2016, and William Eggleston at the Tate Modern London in 2013. Stella posted five photos on her Instagram page on one Instagram post dated May 1st, 2019. But just recently, this past weekend, around November the 22nd, she deleted all four photos that were within the five photos that she posted in her post about William Eggleston's up-and-coming exhibition at the David Zewiner Gallery in London. This is what Stella said in her Instagram post. William Eggleston my style icon, to dress you is an honor and to celebrate your work in London is a gift to anyone that can get to see it. So don't miss his exhibition to one fourth at David Zewiner Gallery. Now, William and Stella men's how cool is that? In this Instagram post on Stella's page, While she was promoting William Eggleston's exhibition in London, she showed photos taken of her studio in London with William Eggleston sitting inside of her studio, having his photo taken by some unknown to me photographer off in the distance. In the corner of the Instagram photo hanging on the wall of her studio, is a photograph taken by William Eggleston called The Red Room 1972-3. You can clearly see the photograph taken of my father's home at 508 MacArthur Street by William Eggleston hanging on her wall in her studio as if they're trying to show off William's work to get people to go to his exhibition and buy his photography and films. I screenshot all five photos that she shared in this post on her Instagram page because I saw a photograph taken of my father's home and I thought this was quite interesting that Stella was such a big fan of photographs taken of my father's home. I would later reach out to Stella and tell her all about what was going on with William Eggleston's fabricating and slandering my father's life and unsolved murder with photos of him. 
Regardless of what I told her, she still could care less about her friend, William Eggleston, scamming and lying to his buyers of his work when it comes to dealing with my father's photos of him and his home. Stella seems to not understand or doesn't seem to care how it affects me and my family all these lies that are said about my dad and his unsolved murder by her style icon, William Eggleston, and his friends that help promote him. His friends stand by his lies regardless if they know he is lying. Stella stands by his lies and tries to cover up for him so much that these five photographs that she shared on her Instagram post were all removed recently, except for one. The one that wasn't removed was just a photograph that you see of William Eggleston sitting down on her couch in Stella's studio. Before Stella removed the four photographs, you could clearly see these photos showing framed photographs William Eggleston took of my father and his home on the walls of her studio. My question is this. Why did you take them down, Stella? After just recently when I posted on Twitter and Facebook comments and tagged you in the comments and your dad and David Lynch about how I was putting out another episode on my podcast about you helping William Eggleston make money off my father's unsolved murder and legacy with false and fabricated made-up claims. I know why you took them down, because you're trying to cover your tracks and you don't want people to talk bad about your style icon, your muse, William Eggleston. Meanwhile, you're okay with him spreading lies about my father's unsolved murder and life for his personal benefit and gain. Well, I'm not okay with him spreading lies about my father's life and unsolved murder, so that's why we're here today, so you all can learn the truth. If you want to see the photograph that I'm talking about that Stella erased off her Instagram page, then you are more than welcome to go on my Instagram page at janeflowers22 and go down to the date, May the 4th, 2019. There you will see the screenshots I saved of the photos that she was sharing on her Instagram page. Or you could also read an interesting article that I read in Vogue Italia about Stella McCartney interviewing photographer William Eggleston called Stella McCartney Interviews Photographer William Eggleston for Us by Nicoletta Spolini, dated November the 11th, 2016. In this article, you see four photos of Stella's studio in London taken by Stella's sister, Mary McCartney. The photos were taken by Mary McCartney exclusively for Le Humeur Vogue. I commented on Stella's Instagram post about William Eggleston slandering and fabricating my father's unsolved murder for his benefit and gain. I was crying out, begging that she could please help me stop this man from lying about my father's life and unsolved murder for money. Maybe she could speak to him since he won't speak to me and tell William to stop spreading lies and making money off fabricating my father's life and unsolved murder because I don't have the money to get an attorney and file a lawsuit to make William stop spreading his lies about my father's life and unsolved murder for money. This is what I said about Stella's Instagram post that she deleted four photographs off of that featured a photo of my father's home that William took. 
Meanwhile, on Stella's world, Stella McCartney is glorifying a liar and a scammer, namely photographer William Eggleston, while there is a photo that was taken by Ag in my father's home at 508 MacArthur in Greenwood, Mississippi, seen in the background of her studio in England. For the record, I don't glorify scammers or liars for that matter. My father's life and unsolved murder have been fabricated by William Eggleston for money and fame. U.S. Navy veteran dentist Dr. Tom Boring deserves better than the false legacy William Eggleston has handed him. People lie. Facts do not lie. After my post, there was no response back to me. It was as if I never said anything and life went on. I would later reach out to William Eggleston's daughter, Andrea Eggleston, on Instagram, trying to speak to her, asking her if she would please speak to me about my father's unsolved murder, that her father is making millions of dollars off fabricating and slandering. This is what I said on my Instagram post on May 15th, 2019, after I got blocked by Andrea Eggleston on Instagram. My cries are heard on deaf ears. I recently reached out to Andrea Eggleston at Electra Eggleston on her Instagram page in a comment section of her post requesting if she could please help me speak to my father, William Eggleston, about his claim that my father, U.S. Navy veteran Dr. Tom Boring, was murdered with an axe to his head, and I get, wouldn't you know it, I get blocked from her Instagram account. The story of my life block and move on. Why does this family try so hard to ignore my cries? I know why. Because they can and they have no proof to back up their claims about my dad's life and unsolved murder. This is why. Five days before Andrea Eggleston blocked my Instagram account, my father's anniversary of his unsolved murder had finally arrived on May the 10th, 2019. Now, I'm a victim just as much as my father's a victim because I go through depression and stress like any normal person would when they lose someone that they love dearly that was murdered. But does this matter to William Eggleston and his family? Does it matter how he affects me and my family with his lies and how his kids block me on all their social media accounts and act as if I don't exist? Of course it doesn't matter to him. He doesn't want to speak to me and neither do his children. They just want to keep making money off selling lies about my father's life and unsolved murder with photos of him and his home. Some of those photos are pictures of my father in the nude. So they're selling lies with photos of my father's penis. These people have no compassion or morals for a murdered man, much less his family who still haven't stopped grieving over his untimely passing. I can't stop thinking about his murder every day because his life and unsolved murder is being fabricated every day and has been for decades now. This eats me up inside. Later on in May that year, Paul McCartney stopped in Memphis, Tennessee to visit his good friend, William Eggleston. I could not comment on anyone's post about his visit, so this is what I said on my Instagram page on May 29th, 2019, about William Eggleston's surprise visit in Memphis, Tennessee from his very good friend, Paul McCartney. 
is it to me or does Paul McCartney look unhappy around the time these three photographs were taken in Memphis, Tennessee this past week at the Eggleston Trust? Paul definitely does not look happy to me. Would you be happy either knowing that the one man you admire as a photographer has been lying to you and the world about a Navy veteran doctor's life and unsolved murder for money? I would not be happy either when looking a liar in the face. And truly, if you think about it, why would Paul McCartney be happy? And he definitely did not look happy in the photo when he was visiting his buddy, William Eggleston. I would later comment on another post in my Instagram page about Paul McCartney sitting down on a couch, hanging out with Winston Eggleston and William Eggleston in Memphis in May 2019. This is what I said. And then this happened. Paul McCartney was seen hanging out with William Eggleston and his son, Winston, this past week in Memphis. Wow, how cool is that? Do you think Paul questioned Winston and his father about his dad's false claim that my father, U.S. veteran Dr. Tom Boring, was murdered with an axe to his head, or the false claim that he died where the red ceiling photograph was taken? I have a feeling Paul might have spoken to Winston about his dad's claim about my dad's life and unsolved murder. Wouldn't you be curious and want to know if William is lying or not? I would definitely want to know if I was Paul. My father deserves better than the false legacy William Eggleston has made for him. This is all I said in my post, and my father definitely does deserve better than the false legacy William Eggleston has handed him and his friends helped to promote. As much as I comment, as much as I reach out to all these people and say, hey, please stop spreading lies about my father's unsolved murder and life for money, they ignore me and look the other way. It is quite shaking the way they treat victims of an unsolved murder and their family members who still try to recover from the trauma of losing their loved ones. As time would go by, this year people were getting yancy about the quarantine during the coronavirus pandemic and wanted to connect with friends and family that they missed so much. People like Stella McCartney missed William so much that she held a virtual live meeting on Instagram to help William promote his work again and talk about it and educate people about it. I want to share with you all what she recently stated in her live virtual meeting with William Eggleston on May 20, 2020, 10 days after my father's unsolved murder. Here's what she stated. Stella, I'm going to start by introducing you at least because some people may not know when they should know about you. So... You're not a sir, because you're not British. But if you were British, but if you were British, you would be for sure. Sir William Eggleston, without a doubt. Do you have favorites? Do you have ones that bring back more memories, or... William, not at all. Stella, don't you... That's good. Do you have any that you don't like? William. Well, you're right, but I don't have favorite pictures that I have taken at all. Stella. I don't have favorite pieces that I've designed. I have pieces that I sort of go, that wasn't quite resolved enough. I shouldn't have let that one go yet. You know, like pieces, I kind of reserve the right to kind of comment on that maybe I'm not so keen on, but... 
William, I understand. Stella, what about fashion for you? Because you are my muse, and I do believe you're only wearing Stella McCartney clothes right now. William, we talked actually a lot when we did speak last week. What I thought was really interesting is how your relationship with Lynch, David Lynch. We were talking about the cinema, the cinematography aspect to your work, and how when I look at your photography, I see movement. I see there's so much movement in your work. William chuckles. <laughs> Stella, and yet it's obviously still. William, you're right. I think there is movement, particularly when one is closely examining the print itself of a certain image. There's movement everywhere. One has to really look deeply into that. Photograph for the those little indescribable movements to appear, but it is going on. Stella, and then did you ever, did you ever think of making moving images? Did you ever dabble in film? William, oh yes. Stella, how did that feel? William, well, I work in video for a while using a handheld portable camera machine. It is a feature length shot on black and white video. The title is stranded in Canton, the Chinese city. It means a lot to me. I want to stop right here for a minute, please, and talk to you all about my father's biography because I'm going to mention to you a little bit more than William Eggleston has spoken about himself and his film, Stranded in Canton. On many occasions, while Tom was married to Brenda, photographer William Eggleston would occasionally stop by to visit him at his home. When William would stop over to visit with him, most of the time they were using weed and quaaludes together when they were hanging out with one another partying and having a good old time. You can see these live recordings of their life recorded onto film by photographer William Eggleston on one of his documentaries about the American South and his film Stranded in Canton. Stranded in Canton is a 77 minutes long film and it was shot in black and white in 1974 with a Sony Porta Pack recorder. William equipped his Sony Porta Pack recorder with an infrared video tube so he could shoot in dark places with low lighting or places without lights. William shot hours upon hours of his friends and family in Memphis, New Orleans, and Mississippi with some of the scenes fueled by whiskey and quaaludes. Some of the film seems to be manually script, but mostly it is people just acting as themselves on film. It takes place at night and in bars outside in the parking lot, in people's houses, and pretty much anywhere William felt he needed to film. It was not easy for me to watch the film. One of the reasons is because of its disturbing scenes throughout the film. In one film scene, you see redneck drunks on a sidewalk on a street in New Orleans, then you see the two drunks bite the head off of a live chicken. You then see them sucking the chicken's blood out of its neck. And if, if this wasn't disturbing enough, you see in another scene shown just after a clip of my mother and me, William Eggleston's friend, Randall, 
who committed suicide later in life is shown at the young age of 19 years old calmly shoving an open beer bottle up his ass while he looks to be intoxicated on alcohol and mumbling to himself. To me, this was very disturbing indeed. I was grateful and honored to see my father on film, but I was not hear- happy hearing his friend William lie about how he was murdered in his film. There is an appearance of William Eggleston's friend from Memphis, Tennessee, singer Alex Chilton, who is in the band Big Star along with an appearance of the blues singer Fury Lewis, singing the blues. There is even a cameo appearance of the king of rock and roll, Elvis Presley, and the ionic piano player, Jerry Lee Lewis. In the scene with Elvis, he can be seen singing Glory, Glory, Hallelujah on stage, and one of his 70s jumpers outfits. Jerry Louis Lewis can be seen running his fingers up and down his piano while jumping and jolting to the beat of his music. Both scenes are recorded in black and white. There is other footage of Brenda and Tom and his daughter Jane that can be seen in different scenes throughout the film. And in one scene of the film, you see little baby Jane suckling on her mother's breast while Brenda is socializing with William's former girlfriend, Missy Lavender, Dr. Vernon Richards. In another scene, you see Tom talking about his teeth and gums. He is seen ranting on and on about how perfect his gums and teeth are. Later on in the film, you hear and see William state that Tom was murdered with a hatchet to his head. It is very unfortunate for Tom and his legacy because William is lying about how Tom was murdered. He has no proof to back up his claim. I will prove to you that he was not murdered with an axe to his head. But first, it is imperative that I must first finish his life story because the best is yet to come. The film was also made into a book called Stranded in Canton. It contains 40 frame enlargements from the digital remastered version with a brief appreciation from the filmmaker Gus Van Sant. The book is sold in a package form with a DVD that contains more than 30 minutes of bonus footage with an interview with photographer William Eggleston that was conducted at the Toronto Film Festival in 2005. Stranded in Canton and its publication came with a documentary that was published in 2005. The film was directed by the American film producer Cal Dutt, Cotty Chubb, and co-directed by Robert Gordon. That same year in 2005, William released yet another documentary that featured photographs of Dr. Tom Boring. The name of the film is William Eggleston and the Real World. It was released on August 31, 2005 in New York. It is narrated and directed by Michael Almoretta. This documentary offers an up-close and personal view of photographer William Eggleston in action as he is taking pictures in Mayfield, Kentucky, followed by visits to New York, Los Angeles, and Memphis. You see William in the film wandering around in different locations as if he is in pursuit of things seemingly not there until his camera picks it out, whatever he is in search of. Later in the film, you hear Almereda speak about William's photograph as familiar and strange, recognizable, and 
idabelable, an unbalanced emotion between fear and love, a part of a thing can reflect a whole wider truth. And only in a later scene does Almareda show some of the photographs William found during his pursuit. Throughout the film, you see interpolling passages of William's films stranded in Canton with a shot of the red ceiling photograph. During the closing credits, Eggleston is seen smoking a cigarette, listening to Roy Orbison sing In the Real World while he's looking somewhat drunk and depressed with his friend nearby. This film also featured film and photographs of Dr. Tom Boring and his family that were taken by William. In addition, William returned three years later after the initial screening of Stranded in Canton in 2005 with yet another exhibition that featured a total of 159 images, 134 color, 25 black and white, along with two videos and four cases of miscellaneous materials. The exhibition was called William Eggleston's Democratic Camera. It was held at the Whitney Museum of American Art in New York from November the 7th, 2008 to January 25th, 2009. The retrospective also covered the William Eggleston's guide project slash show with images from the guide, the 14 pictures portfolio, and the troubled water portfolio all intermingled together. Two photographs of Tom and his home were put on display. The first photo was that of Tom standing in the nude in his bedroom on MacArthur Street, titled Untitled Greenwood, Mississippi, 1970, was printed in 1999. The second was the famous red ceiling photograph titled Untitled Greenwood, Mississippi, 1973, printed in 1980. The retrospect looked back at the career of photographer William Eggleston, shown at exhibition were pictures of small town streets, dogs drinking from mud puddles, and a tricycle. The oldest of these images dated from more than a half a century ago, while William's work feels strangely timeless. The Whitney Show also presented Eggleston's rare screened black and white film, stranded in Canton, that was shown on four stations along with some black and white portraits. Also, you see in the opening of William Eggleston's retrospective with a candid interview conducted by film director Michael Almoretta, one key figure in the interview was that of Dr. Tom Boring and the photograph of him standing in the nude in his bedroom on MacArthur Street in Greenwood, titled Untitled T.C. Boring, 1972, Greenwood, Mississippi. The conversation between William and Michael and in the film Imagine the Colorful Mr. Eggleston went as follows. Hello, I'm William Eggleston. Michael, I just happened to get to this at the very beginning. It's a very dramatic picture. Then you see Michael flip to the page of the portrait of Tom in the nude in his bedroom at his home at 508 MacArthur Street. Michael, it has a certain amount of fame to it. From the guide, can you talk about what the circumstances were when you took this? William, well... This man is dead. William is referring to Dr. Tom Boring and the photograph as being dead. William goes on to state, He was murdered. 
He was my great close friend and not your typical type. For instance, I don't know why, but this was his bedroom, which he painted, obviously, with red paint and no other color, but the black spray. And on occasion, whatever, I would visit him frequently. And I suppose it's probably late at night, sleeping, about to be bedtime. And we were talking, obviously, about something, and he starts and says, very smart. I always listen to anything he had to say. I miss him very much. Then Michael asked William, what is his name? William answers with, Tom Boring. He was a dentist. Let me stop right here and make a point that William does not act as caring about Tom's legacy as a friend should act. Tom did not spend 23 years in the United States Navy as a dentist to have his friend, photographer William Eggleston, refer to him as just Tom in an interview for his retrospective. And in all due respects... Tom was a doctor and should be referred to as Dr. Tom Boring, but you don't hear this out of William's mouth in the interview. This interview did not do Tom justice. William clearly states Tom was murdered, which is so, but with all of photographer William Eggleston's claims about Tom and his murder, all his claims are false and fabricated. Just like the claim you hear William state in his film, Stranded in Canton, that Tom was murdered with a hatchet slash axe to his head. This is a false claim. This is also heard in more of William's exhibitions and films, as you will see in the coming chapter. This concludes what I said in my father's biography, The True Legacy of Dr. Tom Boring, from page 130 to 135. Getting back to that conversation between William Eggleston and Stella now, Stella went on to say to William, I know so many people that just are the biggest fans of your work. I wonder if you realize the impact that you've had on so many generations and so many creative people's work. I want to stop here for a minute and say that William knows the impact he's had on my family and I with his lies that he lives by and makes millions on regarding my father's life and unsolved murder. Then William goes on to remark to Stella, I really don't know. I'm quite surprised when I hear People know the work, but I do hear that quite a bit, and I'm always surprised. Stella, I know one of your biggest fans is Jurgen Teller, and actually in my bedroom here, where I am in the countryside, I have a photograph by Jurgen of you playing the piano. I think it's in Nashville. It's in my bedroom here. William, the piano was in a restaurant parking lot outdoors. Stella, it was already outside, that piano? William, yes. Stella, laughs out loud. Ha, 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 ha. Did you just stumble on it or you knew it was there? William, no, they delivered it. Stella, oh my God, that's so funny. He's a huge admirer of your work. I want to stop here for a minute for a second and say that Jurgen Teller is definitely a huge admirer of William Eggleston's work. He also admires his film, Stranded in Canton. I want to share with you all what I said in my father's biography about what Jurgen stated in BBC's Imagine series, the film, The Colorful Mr. Eggleston, hosted by Alan Yintoba and directed by 
Rainer Hollisimer and Jack Cocker that was released July 14th, 2009. I was going to talk about this film in detail at a later date, but I'm going to tell you quickly what Jurgen said about William Eggleston's film, Stranded in Canton. <clears throat> On page 144, I said this. William's film, Stranded in Canton, was mentioned in the next scene with William stating how he filmed the Ionic cult classic. He states, I would start and stop when I thought it was right. The term edit didn't go through my mind. Many people in the film had mixed reactions to William's photographs and film, but photographer Jurgen Teller considered William's work and his film, Stranded in Canton, fantastic, stating it was a total masterpiece. It's wild. Thinking in terms of movie making and I thought what a great way of making a movie and you know all these normal movies there's a story of made to be do do it's boring I just thought it was really fantastic and it was just out there it was really good while Jurgen was impressed with the film I, on the other hand, had mixed emotions about seeing my father's life and unsolved murder being fabricated for William Eggleston's gain, regardless of how it affects Tom's family, who still haven't stopped grieving over his Tom timely passing. That concludes what I said about Jurgen Teller being such a huge fan of William Eggleston's film, Stranded in Canton, on page 144 of my father's biography. Getting back to William and Stella's conversation, Stella went on to say, and we talked about Lynch as well. David Lynch loving your, and you can see it. You can really see that saturation of color and the composition. William, I have so much respect for David Lynch. Yeah, we watched Muhalan Drive last night. Stella, talk to me about that because I'm a huge fan of his too. It's a brilliant film. Stella, yeah, it's a great film. William, do you know that film? Stella, I do. I do know that film. I haven't watched it since it came through. You made me want to watch it. Again, I think it is Naomi Watts in that film. William. Yes, damn. That's so good. One can watch it many times. Stella. Yeah. William. And the little things appear that you've forgotten. Stella. That's lovely. That's, isn't that lovely? I think so. That's a gift. That's really, that's a very, it's important. When you rediscover good things last, don't they? William, that is the highest compliment I can think of to describe a certain film. In this case, it's Mulan Drive. David knows that I think that because we are very close friends. Stella, have you been to his studio in L.A.? Have you been to visit his amazing studio? William, yes, quite often. Stella, isn't that great? I want to watch Mulan Drive in his studio in that room. That should be maybe one of the first things we all do when we get out of quarantine. William, I think he would love it. Stella, have you ever painted William? William, quite a bit. Stella, when? When? When did you start painting? Just because I know David's a big painter, too. William, yes, that's so. Stella, oh, cool. William, 
and they are usually not too large. Stella. So you use a thin marker or a thick marker. William. They're not. I would like them to be thicker, wider. Some of them I want to get wise. They're actually painting pens, and I love those. Stella. Oh, that's nice, yeah. William. Did you ever use your art to help you kind of focus or find a kind of place for yourself? I don't think so, but maybe invisibly? Stella. Yeah, with actually realizing it. William. Some action or thinking? Stella. Yeah. William. I could imagine that. Stella. Maybe the last question, my most important question. William, who's your favorite fashion designer? William, oh, probably you. Stella laughs out loud. Ha ha ha, I was so worried you weren't going to say that. William, definitely. Stella, I can't think of anything better to end the conversation on than that, quite frankly. You're so sweet. William. That's pretty nice point to wrap it up. Stella. It was so lovely to see you, William. This concludes Stella and William's live virtual meeting she had on her Instagram page recently. I hope you all see and understand where I'm coming from with all these examples of how William Eggleston is making money off of my father's unsolved murder and at the same time clearing up any misconception and any lies that he has been putting out in the mainstream about my father's life and unsolved murder with the help of his friends that are celebrities and are in the elite I hope everyone was able to learn a lot today about William Eggleston's photography from my episode and that you will stay tuned for more episodes that teach the truth about photos William Eggleston took of my father and his home in the early 70s. Thank you for joining me today on my podcast. Please stay tuned for more episodes dropping semi-weekly and sometimes daily. Please subscribe and leave a comment. I'll see you next episode. Until then, goodbye everyone.